Glenn Shepard and Edgar Mitchell blasted off from the lunar surface this afternoon to start their three-day return trip to Earth. In today's exploration of the moon's surface, the two astronauts mixed in some fun with their various scientific assignments. Captain Shepard even took time out for golf. David Schumacher reports. That cheery report from Al Shepard. The astronauts didn't have much time to enjoy the day. There was just too much listed in their schedule. More, as it turned out, than they could accomplish. The prime objective was to climb the slope of Cone Crater, but the grade was steeper than they expected, and they were forced to give up. Shepard and Mitchell were tired, and Mission Control finally directed them to turn back. They did, however, make quite a haul of rocks, 108 pounds, and scientists say that not much more could have been accomplished by actually getting to the rim of Cone Crater. Shepard and Mitchell also took slices from beneath the lunar surface with core tube drills and shovels. And when they finally returned to the lunar module on Terry's four and a half hours later, Shepard, in the spirit of Saturday afternoons, teed off at the first lunar open. Uh, Houston, while you're looking at it, you might recognize what I have in my hand is the uh, handle for the contingency sample return. I just still happens to have a genuine six iron on the bottom of it. And my left hand, I have a little white pellet that's familiar to millions of Americans. Despite the fun, there was a good deal of concern over what came next, liftoff and redocking with the command module. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the other ignition. What a liftoff. And liftoff. Roger, ignition. Boom. It's over. It's over. Ten seconds. Roger. Hey, baby. It's over. It's good. We confirm auto ignition. We've got you on television, and it's looking beautiful. You've lost a little weight since the last time I saw you. The concern, of course, was over the docking mechanism. Last Sunday, the astronauts tried six times before they successfully docked. If the mechanism failed today, their lives would depend on a spacewalk from the LEM to the command module piloted by RUSA. The astronauts and mission control played it cool. It's part of the code of the space program, and only afterwards did they reveal how much was riding on the maneuver. Okay, we captured. Captured. Beautiful, normal dock. Okay, and we got a hard dock. Beautiful. Got a big sigh of relief being breathed around here. All over the world there is. <laughs> you ought to try it from up here. <laughs> the astronauts and their valuable rock samples are now safely inside the command module. Tonight they'll fire out of lunar orbit and head for splashdown in the Pacific Tuesday afternoon. David Schumacher, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York. The golf world went bananas today when it heard Alan Shepard was using a six iron on the moon. Golf Magazine quickly made Shepard an honorary member of its All-American team. United Press International countered by assigning one of its sports reporters to handle the story. The Associated Press then dispatched a reporter to interview Shepard's golf pro at Houston's River Oak Country Club. And before the day was out, the world had been informed about Shepard's handicap, his backswing, what Arnold Palmer thought, what Sam McDowell thought, what Gino Capoletti thought, whether Shepard had replaced his divot, and even the name of the company which made the six iron club head. 
The Apollo 14 astronauts tonight are heading toward their Tuesday splashdown in the Pacific, and except for a minor mid-course correction, it appears to be a perfect flight back to Earth. David Schumacher reports. Like many other Saturday golfers, the astronauts slept late this morning, and moonwalkers Shepard and Mitchell slept an hour longer than Stuart Rusa. Mission Control then read them the Sunday papers with heavy emphasis on sports results, new inventions, and features. NASA says the astronauts receive the kind of news they want to hear, and apparently that does not include the war in Asia, politics in Washington, or dissent anywhere. Early this afternoon, the astronauts made a minor course change, just a half mile an hour. In the past, they wouldn't have bothered, but there's a savings in fuel making changes now farther away from Earth and later. And Apollo 14 has been just a little short of fuel ever since the docking problem a week ago. Tonight, the astronauts perform what are listed as four scientific experiments, but demonstrations might be the better word. NASA would like to convince the general public of the practical value of spaceflight, and so the demonstrations will prove how much better liquids separate or crystallize in zero gravity. They do, and it would be helpful in certain chemical processes, for instance, making vaccines, but the cost is still prohibitive. David Schumacher, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York. The Apollo 14 astronauts are still on their way home, cleaning up their spacecraft with a vacuum cleaner and tying down things in the cabin to keep them from banging around on re-entry. Stuart Rusa, who is in the Air Force, left the knot tying to Alan Shepard and Ed Mitchell, who are naval officers, and Rusa said he was glad to be flying with a couple of sailors. Things are going so quietly and smoothly that NASA arranged a press conference between Earth and space, which shows that wherever man goes in the universe, the press agent can't be far behind. First of all, for Al and Ed. Cone Crater. First of all, for Al and Ed. Cone Crater was your major objective on your second moonwalk. You almost made the rim. How close do you think you got? And do you believe you collected enough rocks and samples to accomplish the purpose of your mission? Uh, I think so. Let me take the first part of it with respect to how close we got. I think we were within uh, perhaps 100 yards, more or less, of the ramp. And uh, certainly in a boulder field uh, that was right there associated with the boulders in the ramp.
I don't know exactly what our heart rates were. Obviously, they were higher than the normal sitting rate. But uh, we still were not operating at the maximum capacity of our backpacks for cooling, uh, nor were we operating for extended periods of time at high heart rate. Uh, to us, it was just a matter of, of working against the clock. I think that uh, we had the capability to go longer from the standpoint of fatigue. I don't believe that we were disoriented or lost at any, at any time at all either. Yeah, I, I agree with Al. If, if my previous answer misled you, it, it was uh, uh, only in a matter of context, because given a, a few minutes to look around, we uh, figured out where we were, but trying to do it rapidly made it difficult. And as Al says, time was our major factor. Given another 30 or 40 minutes, I think we could have reached the top of Cove Crater, covered all of our objectives, and uh, um, get back in good fashion. Well, let me add one thing uh, here. I think uh, if we had wanted to, to reach the top of the crater and do nothing else, that, that we could have done that within the time period allotted. But I think that the method in which we uh, uh, reverted to, that of collecting rocks from a point not quite near the top of the crater, provided a lot more geologically and gave us a better cross-section of the rocks in the area, and therefore a better chance of getting rocks ejected from Ibrium. So that was part of the world's first Earth space press conference, but not, we suspect, the last one. Apollo 14 hits the atmosphere of the Earth tomorrow afternoon, and the spacecraft is supposed to come down in the Pacific Ocean near Samoa. NBC News will, of course, cover the splashdown live on radio and television beginning at 3.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time, 2.30 Central Time. Not headed back to Earth after a million miles of travel through space. Answer, get out the vacuum cleaner and sweep up all the loose moon dust. That's exactly what they did today, getting ready for splashdown in the Pacific tomorrow afternoon. ABC News will broadcast that splashdown live at 3.30 Eastern Time. The ecology they're flying back into is in pretty rotten shape, but with pollution and noise and pesticides, today President Nixon sent... Apollo 14 astronauts are speeding home toward their scheduled splashdown tomorrow in the South Pacific, and from their spacecraft tonight, they held a news conference. The astronauts said that they believe they accomplished all their objectives on the moon, even though they did not make it to the rim of Cone Crater in Saturday's moonwalk. We didn't have a great deal of trouble moving around the rocks. Uh, we didn't even have trouble moving the bet around the rocks, except we did have to dodge them, but of course have to be a bit more careful with the bet than uh, walking without it. Our major problem, however, was the undulating ter uh, terrain, where you simply couldn't see more than 100 to 150 yards away from you and see landmarks. Consequently, you were never quite sure what landmark would appear when you topped the next ridge, and we were very surprised when we topped the ridge uh, approached the ridge, which we thought to be the railroad code crater, to find there was another one beyond it. And uh, that was the beginning of the real problem. Given another 30 or 40 minutes, I think we could have reached the top of code crater, covered all of our objectives, and uh, uh, get back in good fashion. Well, let me add one thing uh, here. I think uh, if we had wanted to, to reach the top of the crater, and do nothing else that, that we could have done that within the time period allotted. But I think that the method in which we uh, uh, reverted to, that of collecting rocks from a point not quite near the top of the crater, provided a lot more geologically and gave us a better cross-section of the rocks in the area.